All right. <laughs> Shall we read Genesis chapter 15, the first 11 verses? Can we do that standing if you don't, if you don't mind, if, we, if you, if you um, don't mind standing in reverence and in honor to God? Shall we read after these things? The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the hair of my house is Eliza of Damascus? Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your hair. But one who will come from your own body shall be your hair. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Cardians to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We are ready to hear from you. Please speak to us. Let your word bring direction, guidance, hope, light. Let it bring every great thing that we need in this third month. Thank you, O God, that you would speak through me, O God. Touch these lips of clay. Make me a vessel of honor in your hands. And let your word come forth in power in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. We are... In the third month of the year 2024, our year of manifestation, this is the first Sunday of this third month. You know, this season that we are in is considered um, or is called in the Christian, on the Christian calendar, this is known as the Lent, season of Lent, um, a six-week period covering from Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday was on February 14th, and it covers all through to um, March for 2024, I think it's March 28 or 29, the Easter. You know, to some, it is the Thursday, what is called the Holy Thursday. Um, to some, it's on the Friday, but it covers that period. And it's, it's, it's so filled with significant and very important um, events that took place um, leading to the cross. And so it's a very, very sacred month, if we may call it. The month of March, every month is sacred. Uh, but the, the month of Easter is always a month that, you know, allows us to really focus on what Christ did for the church. And that is dying on the cross for us. Amen. And, um, you know, the, the theme for this month, like we've done every month, we just came out from the month of manifest love in our year of manifestation. This, this month, our focus is on Christ. So the theme for the month is manifest Jesus. Amen. If there is any manifestation that we need, it must be Jesus being manifested in us and through us. So that will be our focus for this month. Amen. Amen. May Jesus become manifest in every area of your life. May the glory of Christ be unveiled in your life. May you, may you become a testament 
um, a billboard of Christ that people can read and direct them to Jesus in the name of the Lord. May people come into contact with you and come into contact with the blood. May people come into contact with you and come into contact with salvation. May they look at you and may they know that indeed Jesus loves them. Amen. Amen. But for the sake of this morning, I feel a burden. I have a burden to bring a word of encouragement, you know, uh, and still is going to center around Christ, but it's a word of encouragement to lift somebody up, to lift a head up. Amen. And I pray that it will have an eternal significance in somebody's life. It may, it may not be for everybody. Actually, it is for everybody because you'll find yourself in this word. I believe that you will. Amen. Amen. And so I am speaking on what I have captioned, um, don't drift, hold on to Christ. Can you encourage somebody by you and say, don't drift, hold on to Christ. Turn to somebody who will really pay attention to you. And tell them, don't drift. You know, there are, there are many things, and, 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 and again, my assignment is to bring encouragement and to bring an uplifting. Um, there are many, many, many things that try the human soul. If you've lived even a day or two, you'll understand that this human life is filled with so much uncertainties. And especially as people of faith, as people in Christ, as believers, one of the greatest things that test our faith and our belief in God, one of the things that, you know, really challenge the Christian faith is in the word, a big word, D-E-L-A-Y, delay. Everybody say delay. delay. You know, I've learned that delays do not know titles. Delays don't know an apostle, don't know bishop, don't know pastor, don't know cleaner, don't know usher. Delay, delay is such, you know, <laughs> it happens to everyone. Doesn't know color. Doesn't know age, doesn't know tongue, doesn't know tribe, place of birth. No, 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 no. It comes to the wealthy and will come to the poor. It comes to the one that is up and will come to the one that is down. It comes to the one that lives in the gated community. And it comes to the one that lives on the other side of town. And I can be bold this morning to say that there is no one in this room under the sound of my voice. Who can say, as for me, I've never experienced delay. Actually, maybe you are the one. I want to become your friend. One, one way or the other, you will encounter the whiplash of delay. If you haven't been delayed at all in life, at least on the Garden State Parkway, Delays are unavoidable. It's one of the complexities of our work as believers in God and with his dealings. And um, it brings so much tension to our faith. Many people have quit, have thrown in the towel because they couldn't hold on. Many people have got into the place where they felt like maybe God is taking too long. And so, you know what, let me try and do it the way I know how. It's a challenge to our faith. How do you explain it? How do you explain it? You know, God tells you on one hand that everything is finished. Oh, it is done. Oh, on, God, on the cross, Jesus says, said, it is finished. In this Easter, we are going to hear a lot of it is finished. Then on the other side, we recognize that what he said it is finished is not visible. What he said is done, we just came out of five days of prayer. Five nights of midnight exchange. The prayers that have been prayed here. And we know that in the unseen world, it is finished. 
But we live in the seen world and we want to see it. And it's not visible. What do you do? He calls the people of Israel out of Egypt and tells them, I am taking you to a promised land. And he says that the land is already yours, Pastor Rich. He says, this is your land. It's your promised land. Go and occupy it. But then, he tells them that you have to fight to dwell in the land. Fight enemies in the land? I thought you said this was our land. And so, oftentimes, in our faith, the management, the management between that thus says the Lord, and here is my testimony, is where your faith is tested. That is where the true challenge is. That arena of God said, and oh Lord, I thank you, it is done. I have it. It is where faith is tested. Faith is not tested until you have gone through. You know, God will tell you a to Z, but he won't tell you that there is a B and C, and in between, you're going to have challenges. Am I still coming through? But I believe that in the economy of God, everything is finished. And I believe it is so. But you must understand that what God has said is finished will manifest in our lives through times, seasons, and processes. Whatever has God, God has promised, declared, everything that you read in his word, everything that you believe has to go through challenges in order to see its manifestation. I, I have learned this, that Many Christians, we love the destination. We preach the destination. We preach and we prophesy and we declare the arrival. We declare, oh yeah, it is done. But we don't like the journey to the destination. Hmm. We don't like it. We cannot stand the test of the waiting and the delay. But please never forget this. God always has purpose in every journey. Let me try it again. God has what? Purpose in... How do you have a testimony when you have not been tested? How do you gather... How do you call yourself champion of war and overcomer? One that has triumphed when you have not gone through battle. How do you claim victory when you have not run the race? When you have not been in the track? This morning, may God give you fresh understanding to his purposes for your life. You know, God, let me try and put it, let me say it exactly how I want to say it. God is not interested in what you get. God is interested in who you become. I'll say it again to this group here. God is not interested in what you get. God is interested in who you become. And that is why it is important to note that our walk with God is not based on transactions. God doesn't deal with us in, you give me, I give you this transaction. God's walk with us and our walk with God is a walk of transformation. And nothing gets transformed without process and without time and without pain. He will cause you to bleed so that you can lead. You cannot have gain when you have not gone through any 
pain. You don't know what it means to have gloves and be in a boxing ring and exchange blows and be hurt. Listen, if God, and I like the way Pastor Frank of Oswapia puts it, if God were to cushion every blow, you would not grow. And so please hear me. In the journey of life, in the journey of our faith, I came to encourage some. This is the first Sunday of the month of March in the year 2024. And, I, you know, it was so heavy on me when God said, get up, go and preach this word. Because there are some that are already throwing the towel on the third month. You're already tired. On the first day when you got the first news of the year, you gave up. The first week, the first month, when things did not sound like how you had prayed. 21 days were over and before 21 days were done, you were getting some news and you began to say, ah, bah. In the book of Exodus, there is a story about God taking the people of God to the promised land. Exodus chapter 23, I believe. And he was telling them that I am taking you on this journey. He said that I will send my fear. Isn't it beautiful? Look at this. I will send my fear before you. Yay. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come. Yay. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Yay. And then he goes to the next verse. And I will send hundreds before you. Yay. Which shall drive out the Hevites and the Canaanites and the Hittites from before you. Yay. And I will not drive Drive them out before you in one year. <laughs> Would you still say, yeah? I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land becomes desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. In the next verse, it says, little by little, poco a poco, little by little, small, small, few, few. I am going to take them out, but you will not have it all in one day. What the deal? You see, the dealings of God. I came to encourage somebody in this room that you know what? The fact that you haven't seen it manifest means that God is a liar and God has forgotten and it will not happen. No! I, I, I have learned this that oftentimes, I was saying it on the prayer line the other day, that when you really consider the faith walk and our walk with God, you realize that delays happen. There are four areas where delay happens. Sometimes God himself will delay you. God, in his wisdom, will say, ah, like these people, I'm going to slow you down. The way you are going right now, if I make you a millionaire, you forget, I mean, you will kill everybody and <laughs> I will slow you down. Sometimes God will delay marriage for you because the day you marry, Say, but pastor, it's been 10 years and I'm expecting one baby. Oh, yeah. Ask brother Abraham. And I'm going to talk about him. Sometimes, sometimes in his, in his dealings, the day I opened the scripture and I read the scripture that says that God is in heaven and he does whatever he pleases. That day I said, what, what is the point in questioning and, and being angry? He does whatever he pleases and he never makes mistakes. Then, Lord, do it your will. You see, when we pray, let your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, we don't understand it. Because the will of God, eh, if the will of God were that simple and plain and easy, all of us by now, we become billionaires. God knows that if he gave you one million right now, the money will kill you. And so he said, I'm going to give you small, small. Other times, delays will come in, will come our way through Satan's activities. He frustrates. He pushes back. 
you know, he, he rises to contend. We are in a battle. Other times, it is through the mouths of others or the dealings of people around you, the people that we connect with. And I, I don't even want to touch that. But I also realize that a lot of delays are self-inflicted. When we are afraid to take the step of faith, when we are afraid, God has spoken, but you are afraid. God has said go, but what if I go and it doesn't work? And so you are standing at the same place. Walk on the water. What if I walk and I sink? God tells the people of Israel that I'm taking you to the promised land. A journey that is supposed to take 10, 11 to 12 days, we are told. That journey ended up to be a 40-year journey. And it wasn't God's fault. It wasn't. It was because they got distracted. I pray that the Lord will help us. You know, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, let me begin to, uh, this will be very short. Hebrews chapter 2, are you getting blessed? Today God will lift your faith. Today, I prayed for you. You will, you will become stronger than you were yesterday. No delay will be able to slow you down in your faith. 2024, whatever God has said, eh, it will come to pass because you believed in his word. Amen. The Bible says that therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, like the things I'm preaching now, lest we drift away. And a lot of Christians are drifting away because they are not listening. God is speaking, not that God doesn't speak. God is always speaking. Even when he is quiet, he is speaking. I pray today <laughs> that you will be grounded on Christ, the solid rock. Amen. I want to take my time and speak to us in the next few minutes. Drifting. The word drift, in, you know, according to dictionary definition, means that deviation from direction or de deviation of direction from an intended course of currents or winds. Deviation. You deviate from an intended course. Because of current, because of winds, okay? So let me read it where. Deviation of what? Direction. Deviation of direction from what? This is where I want to go. But you got deviated because there was a current, there was a wind, there was a distraction. Another definition says that to be slowly and aimlessly uh, 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 what to be slowly and aimlessly or passively carried of course. May you not be carried of course passively. It's a gradual shift of attitude. In attitude, in your opinion or your position, you gradually drifting is so, I mean the way drifting is you slide slowly. Have you tried, have you been drifted on, 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 on ice before driving? Do you see how dangerous it is? Have you been on the highway and got distracted because of a side attraction? And what was intended to be a 30 minutes drive becomes a four hour drive. You drift when you get passive about what you have been promised. Please listen to me. You don't have to be passive and just accept things that come your way. You don't just accept things anyhow, passively. Faith is not passive. Tell somebody, faith is not passive. Faith is so sure. And I'm going to prove to you. Faith, the, faith, the color of faith. If it is white, it is white. Faith is a fighter. Faith is determined. Faith is focused. Faith is vision-minded. Faith is set on what is ahead. Today, may God sharpen your eyes of faith. But you know, 
Because of delays, our, our faith is often put on trial. When all of a sudden, after all this, you're driving on the highway and the car breaks down. You've prayed. you fasted. You are going for that job interview, the only interview that they've called you to come. And that very day was the day that the car broke down. The month that you didn't have enough in the account and you had even prayed, you gave all your money at the altar. Pastor said today, bring an offering, a seed offering to the Lord. And we are believing God for a project. And you took all the money you laid at the altar. That is the very day that the kids got sick. And your insurance had been canceled. That the school called you and said that we have, we have suspended, put a restriction on your account because you owe a balance. When you have been so sure that as for this job, I will get it. And they will tell you, we are very sorry to announce to you that, you know, you are, you are qualified. You have everything it takes for this job. But unfortunately, Ha, somebody is being lifted up this morning. I see healings coming already. I see lifting ups already. I see peep jokes. Listen, whatever the enemy has held in your mind today, there will be a shift in the name of Jesus. Because many people have become disheartened and broken because God said and God hasn't done it. My Bible tells me, that God is not a liar. Tell somebody God is not a liar. Tell another person, God doesn't make promises that he doesn't intend to fulfill. Can you hold somebody and shake him? Say, God never makes promises that he doesn't intend. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Now engage the person for a little bit. Okay. Say, say to her, can you really stay the course? When, when you pray, what you prayed for is taken away from you, can you still stay the course? Can you, can you turn to somebody? Can you turn to somebody? Let's have church. Today I want to, can you tell somebody, will you still march around Jericho on day five? And nothing is coming down. Will you still march around it? Now, 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 let, let me let me talk to 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 some namers. Turn to another person and say, "It's it's it's round six in the pool. Leprosy hasn't left you. Will you still dive into the water?" The seventh time. Will you? Jericho is yours. Go take it. You have marched day one, day two, day three, and it's not an easy walk. Will you still walk and keep walking until? The manifestation or you feel you get tired and many of you in this room according to the color of your eyes you are so tired <laughs> you're tired <laughs> you say pastor how do you know I see <laughs> but my, my assignment my assignment he called me Am I doing okay so far? I came to encourage you. I don't want to yell and scream at you today. You know, when he gave me this mandate, he said, I've called you to be a restorer. I've, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon, 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 upon you because upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the broken. He has anointed me to heal, mend the brokenhearted. And today I stand in my mandate of restoration. And I declare in this room 
I pray over you by the calling of God upon my life that you will be restored. Amen. When I wasn't sure why, he would still ask me to do this. And I asked him, he said, I am sending you as a restorer. He told me, I will not give you perfect people. I'm bringing you people that have been dumped by the roadside. People that people have trampled and walked on. I'm bringing you people who feel like life has not treated them fairly. I'm bringing you the broken. I am bringing you those who are downtrodden. I'm bringing you the rejected. I am bringing you the abandoned. And these are the people that I am going to lift up to the place of restoration. And I stand in that grace. I stand in that office. By the hand of God upon my head. By the hand that was laid upon me through the Apostle Frank of Oswapia, when, he, when I knelt down 15 years ago and I accepted the calling and the oil was poured on my head, I, I, I pray God who has saved me for this, that you will be restored. You will be restored. You will be restored. God would not lie. I have tasted it. I've seen it. I know it. I will not present to you a God that I haven't grown to know. I was telling somebody after all these decades of, of following him, this is not the time to turn my back and feel like God is not with me or God has left me and I can confidently, I have the mark on my back. I have the scars to prove that God is a true God who honors his word and I came to announce unto some faith people in this room that you are not going to throw in the towel or quit. You are not going to believe the lie and think that God is not true to his word. I came to lift somebody up it doesn't matter what has been thrown at you. It doesn't matter how many years you have been waiting for this one thing to happen. It doesn't matter what it is. God would not lie. He has never lied and he will not lie in your time. He is a restorer and I stand in this grace and I announce your restoration to the camp of the enemy. I announce your restoration to the world that you are rising up again. You are rising up. You will shine. You will break through. You will break forth. You will rise to the top. You will become a topic to the world. They will read your story as a headliner and they will say, how did this happen? How how is this possible? We thought we had finished him, but it will be because God is lifting you up. I wish I had some faith people in this room who are working in their restoration. Lose your mind a little bit and say, this is my word. I am going to be restored. It doesn't matter the delay in marriage. Yes, I've waited. I've waited. I've waited. Some of you have kept yourself. You haven't seen any man. You haven't given yourself to drink and alcohol. You said, I want to serve God faithfully. But it feels like the more you try to do right, the longer it takes. It is not over for you. God God will honor his word. God will lift you up. You have been believing God for just one child. Oh God, that I will be a mother too. I'll be a father too. It is not over. God will not lie. He will honor his word. If you are the one, lift up a voice and give the Lord a shout in this room. God is a restorer. You don't restore something or anything that is not broken. You don't restore what is not damaged. You only restore because it has lost its originality. Because it has lost its newness. You restore because something is not right. And listen, all of us are not correct in this room. But God has a way of lifting up and polishing us like gold. How do you encounter gold? You see how beautiful the gold you are wearing is? You only wear it as an ornament. But little did you know that it was dug out of dust, filled with dust. They had to wash it. They had to put it through fire. They have to do put it on anvil and hammer. They have to hit it so hard for it to become who you are and what you are wearing. Listen to me. Until you have been hammered, until you have gone through some pain, you will not enjoy what it means to 
to, to enjoy gold. I see gold in you. I see treasure in you. I see greatness in you. I see prosperity in you. I see, oh my God, but yet you must go through some fire. It doesn't mean that God is not with you. He said, yeah, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. Yes, you will go through the fire. I will be with you. You will go through the storm. I will be with you. Like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you feel like you are in the fire. We came here to serve God. How did we end up in the fire? He's telling you that I have to try you a little bit. Your story of restoration is here. You will not be in the house of bread and beg for bread. Whew. Ah, somebody is healed today. You see, please let me, let me do this in 10 minutes. I know, I know, I know. I feel it too. I feel, I feel it too. I feel it. I feel his presence. In Genesis chapter 23 that we read, God uses the man Abram as a father of faith to teach us faith. Because I, I, I read through scripture and I realize and I look at our lives. Indeed, we, don't, we speak faith, but we don't understand faith. And if you look at the verse 1 of that chapter, the Bible says, after these things. After what things? After these things? What are you talking about? After the pain. After the frustration. After delay. All of us have had our after these things. And may I announce to you that after these things, your breakthrough is coming. In John chapter 21 verse 1, the Bible says that afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. After these things, Jesus appeared again. Afterward, he appeared. After the crucifixion, he appeared. After the sacrifice on the cross, he appeared. After the denial, after the betrayal, after the mockery, after they are spat on him. Even Jesus, the injustices. After these things, after these things, after these things, yes, after these things, after these things, the things that you know, you alone know. And the things that nobody even know. And the ones that everybody thinks they know. The things that you have been struggling with after the battles, after these things. May I announce to you, after these things. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 31. That if God, what, what then shall we say to these things? Everyone in this room, you are, you are filled with these things. Does anybody have some these things? <laughs> some of you are in your, in your, in your these things moment. What are these things? You know, just when, you know, uh, um, uh, what is that game that you, you um, whack the mole, right? Is that, what is it called? Yeah, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you thought you've hacked one, the another head jumps up. And then you, you, you keep in, is that, what, is that the game? Some of you have been kicking it, and the more you kick, and then more are popping up. Like, where are these things coming? When you think that you have really gone through this one, I'm about to celebrate and your celebration is just cut short in between. You can't even finish one party after these things. After these things. After these things. After the promises have been given and you have been waiting. After these things. Abraham received a promise in chapter 12. He received it. Ah, you're going to be the father of this. After these things, then he made a wrong move. You make the wrong move, brought lots with him. It's not everyone that you must bring along your promise. Okay, I'll leave that for another day. Made a wrong move. After these things, after these things, he even, he even went to a place and they said, oh, hey, who is this one? He said, no, she's my sister. Because of hunger, because of famine, she throws his own wife under the bus. I don't know her from anywhere until she realizes that there was an attempt and God approaches him. You know, after these things, after the, after the pressure, 
after Abraham. He's been so pressured that his own wife says, why not, you know, you, you go into the daughter. I say, okay, if that's what you want. After these things, when he has said that, I'm going to give you your promise. After these things. Pressure of delay. Pressure of disappointment. He thinks that the promise God gave him, what is this? When is it going to come after these things? He even asked God in Genesis 15 and verse 3. Abraham asked God, what says I'm going to do it? Abraham said, but you know, let me ask you two questions, God. You have not given me any offspring. The one even in my house is only my, is not even mine. How is this going to happen? Then he goes to the next verse. He asks God some, you know, we put God in a on trial. Sit down, let me ask you questions. How is this going to happen? The word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your head, but one who will come from your own body shall be your head. Abraham, do you hear God? After these things. Tap somebody and say, after these things. Go to the verse 2. The verse 2 and the verse 3 are where the questions are. Verse 2. Verse 2, I'm beginning to finish. But Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless. How long? You promised me a child, but I don't have a child. 25 years. Lord, I mean, uh, how am I going to enjoy my first baby? You know, 100 years you are giving me my promise. Hey. And God tells him that it's not about you, but it's about my assignment. There's an Isaac in you. That must bring forth Jacob and Esau. And out of that, I'll raise a Jacob. And out of that, I'll raise Israel. I want to build a kingdom for myself. You are being selfish, Abraham. You are going for things that you just want for, to satisfy you. But my agenda is bigger. When you understand the agenda of God, you will know that it is never about your satisfaction, but his glory. Amen. You see how you can't clap well? It's, it's two things. Either, either you have received it so well. But God tells him after these things, I am still with you. Please hear me. God is still with you. Amen. Can you encourage somebody by you and say, God is still with you. And so, three quick things. Write them down. What then should I do? What should we do when we, fa we are faced with delays? What should we do when we feel disappointed? What do we do when we have gone through so much pain? And we are not seeing anything come th coming through. Let's see what Abraham did in verse 5. The, read verse 5. Everyone read with me. Then he brought him what? Outside and said. He brought him what? Outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, so shall. So the first thing that must happen to you is that you must step out of the tent. You have stayed in this tent of perception. You have stayed in this. All you have seen is this littleness, smallness. Step out from the tent. Change your perspective. Get a new perspective. See God with a different eye. Step out. God took him outside. God has to take you out of you looking at yourself in Imposed ceiling of limitations. You have self-imposed. You have put yourself in this place and you have actually put God in a box. Step out. Step out. Who said it is too late? Step out. Who said I am too old? Step out. Who said there is no way out? You are bound. Go and check with the people of Israel coming out of Egypt. Rest behind them. Enemies behind them. Step out. He makes a way where there is no way. Step out. Change your perspective. Who said you cannot finish it? You cannot finish the project. I cannot finish the school. They have failed me three times. They have failed me four times. Who said it is over? Step out. Step out. Can somebody step out this morning? Step out. Step out. Step out. Change your lenses. Go back and say, ah, the lenses you gave me is wrong lenses. You have to change the medication. Change it. You need God to change your sight. That I, as for me, I always filled with debt. I can, I can, you know, I'm, every time it's become like a mountain. What are thou, old mountain, because, before Zerubbabel? It shall become plain. Listen, whatever debt it is, God is able. Amen. Tell somebody, step out. step out. 
Can I, can I do a little exercise? I have to go. St stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Wherever you are standing, stand on your feet. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think when I have the mic here, I also have some little power to command you to do some things, right? And so now I am in charge here. Are, are you standing? And can you take in the same space, can you step out of where you're standing and do something? Move your feet. No, no, you don't have to get out of your seat. Just move. What are you doing? You're stepping out. It takes an effort. It takes an effort. You cannot step out sitting at the same place. Please be seated. 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 Tell somebody set out. Step out. Tell somebody step out. Step out. I know the family is tough, but step out. Because some of you have really put God, you have judged God already because of family history. Because they call this a generational curse. This is a generational thing. My father had it, my mother had it, my great grandmother had it. It's always happening. And me too. You are stepping out of it. Step out. Step out. Have you, have you come, out, uh, come across the scripture in Ephesians 3.20 that now to him who is able to do exceedingly. Look at those words, abundantly. Above all that we have the mouth and the boldness to ask. And the ones that we can't even ask but it is in, your, in our head. He's able to do according to the power the same power that rose Christ from the dead. The same power that broke the grave. The same power that rolled the stone. According to the power that is at work within you. It is new. It is in you. It is not so high like Deuteronomy 30 will say. It is not in the heavens that you say, oh, send an angel. It is not in the sea that you say, send ships to go and bring it. He said, it is in you. The power is in you. Somebody say, the power is in me. Today, I declare that you are stepping out. Somebody shout, I step out, 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 I step out. Step out. Begin to enlarge your mind. Your thinking must change. Your mindset must change. Paul said the smallness you think is your own fault. Stop thinking small. Stop dreaming small. After all, dreaming is free. Why do you have to dream small if it is free? Stop. Expand your mind. Begin to see God as he is. I came to challenge somebody that it is in you to rise up. Step out. When Jesus, oh, mommy, I, I'm finishing. When Jesus came by this man in the book of John chapter 5, who had been by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He said, my friend, why are you here? I said, hey, nobody wants to help me. He's making excuses like many of you. You have made excuses for your standstillism. He said, this is all I want to be. This is what I want to be. Nobody is helping me. My father didn't help me. My mother didn't help me. My uncles are not helping me. And I don't have anybody to hold my hand who is going to help me. Pastor, I can't do it. My friend, you are in your standstillism. Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Then you know what Jesus said? Jesus did not step up and, and come in and roll his bed for him. He said, my friend, get up, get up. Roll your bed. Some of you, listen, you must get up. Begin to roll that mat. Roll it. Because the power is in you. The breakthrough is in you. Can you roll that bed? Roll that mat. And he said, begin to walk. I am stepping out of delays. I am stepping out of denials. I am, st oh, I, I feel, I feel like I can, I can stop right here. Somebody says, step out. This month of March, you are going to be celebrating the resurrection. Jesus did not stay in the, in, the, in the grave. On the third day, he stepped out. They came to look for him in the place they left him. Listen, they will come and look for you in the place they left you. They buried you. They took, put you in there, but they will come you. They'll come there and you are no longer there. The Bible says that the angel said to them, he is no longer here. He is risen. You need to get back. Oh. Step out. 
Maybe I should have captioned this step out. Listen, you must step out. This month, somebody say, I'm stepping out. No more limitations. No more holdbacks. Whatever mindset that I can't do it, I break out, 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 I break out. God is enlarging my tent. God is bringing you to some people. He's going to give you some exposure. Eh? God is going to expose you to some greatness. In this season, all you need is one person. One person. He is connecting you with one person. One person. One person who will change the story, the trajectory of your life. It will change one person. All you need, somebody who will hold your hand and say, I got you, I got you. Not because you sat there, but because you stepped out and stepped into it. May you step out of that place of mediocrity. May you step out, out of that place of emptiness. Step out and step in. Step out. And when you step out, the second thing, stay right there. The second thing you do when you step out is you believe. Do you believe? Step out and believe in your breakthrough. Step out and believe in your... Look at the verse 6. Look at the verse 6. Look at the verse 6. Look at the change how you believe. Tell somebody, change how you believe. The Bible says, and he believed in the Lord. And the Lord accounted to him for righteousness. That same belief is the word that we shout out, Amen. When we are praying, say, Amen. That is what Abraham did. He said, Amen. What God has said, I believe. When you say amen, you are saying, I believe. I believe, I believe. It doesn't look, it doesn't sound right, but I believe, I believe, I believe. We need to come off all the things parading. Listen, stop these things that is on social media. Type 10 amen, and you become a millionaire the next day. And do this, bring water, bring holy water, bring money and I'll pray for you. Bring this and all of that. Stop that crap. Step out. Step out. Abraham changed his own belief to trust and said, I believe. I can hear Abraham almost say, Lord, I don't know how. As for this, in my old age, I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know what is going to happen, but I believe. Would you dare say that to God and say, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I believe. I believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. The final thing, the final thing. Stay right there. Stand on your feet. Let me close. The final thing in verse 8 to verse 11. Read out with me. I feel a shift in this room. I feel a shift. Listen, you're going to leave this room empowered so much that you will go back to work or to school tomorrow and they will see the confidence with which you will walk in because they know your story. They have actually been witnesses to your misery. And they know how you have cried. That your eyes are almost popping out. But they are going to come out. And this time, you came out with your makeup. You came up with your. You came out and you are wearing your wig again. You came out and you are on a new dress. Your cologne has even changed. You, listen, you are going to walk in with a swag. Why? Because I have changed the way I have believed. See the third thing. All read with me. And, and he said, Lord God. How shall I know that I inherit it? Look at what God said to him. God said this. So he said, bring me a three-year-old heifer. Bring me a three-year-old female goat. Bring me a three-year-old this and all of that. Go to verse 10. Go, run, 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 run. Then he brought all these things to him and cut them in pieces down the middle and placed each piece opposite other. But he did not cut the bread into two. Now watch this. And when the vultures, when the what? Some of you have had some vultures who are coming in to take your blessing. Abraham says that this is my sacrifice. I will not allow any vulture to take what is mine. He drove them away. You know what it means? It means that you must fight for your promise. Fight for it. No vulture must attend to my sacrifice. We drive them away. That is the way we pray, the way we pray. That is the way we give, the way we give. That is why I am charged this morning the way I am charged. I feel an empowerment this morning because you are breaking out and you are driving away. Drive them away. Declare, I drive these vultures away. Can you lift a loud voice? Drive them away. Somebody, I drive them away. Somebody say, I'm a fighter. I'm driving them away. 
the watcher of is too long, it's taking too long. Maybe do a shortcut. I drive you away. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, the, the watcher of is never going to happen. It's not even possible. I drive that watcher away. Can we turn this room into a prayer room for some few seconds? Begin to pray in this room. Begin to take these watchers. Use the word of God. Drive them away. The vultures of I can't do it. The vulture of maybe family, the pressure. My family wants me to do this. My, they, they want me to. That is pressure. That is pressure. Use the word of God. Use the word of God. Use the word of God. Drive them. Drive them. Another way to drive not only through prayer is through praise. Your praise is a weapon to drive away your vultures. Can you lift some praise in this room and tell the vultures that have surrounded your sacrifice that I will fight for what is mine. I will contend for what is mine. Lift a voice and pray. Like that woman who stayed all night around the sacrifice. He said, I will not let any animal kill and finish up my baby I will I will stay until I see a breakthrough can you lift a voice and praise God in this room like you know how can we turn this place into a praise party let some praise go up let a loud voice go up why because I am moving from that delay with the changed mindset that my God is able my God is able my God is able my God is able Let, let me let me say let me say this this last one. Let me say this one. Oh, I gotta run. I gotta run. Those who are at the age of 40, 50 and up and it feels like you have been at the same place. This is for you. God is going to surprise you in what you call old age. In this age that you are, that you think that I am older, I have passed my young life. He, the Bible says that he said unto Asha that Asha, as your days, so shall your strength be. So dip your feet in oil to the one that people have given up on and says that oh you are too old now no 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 the one who renews that the youth that the strength of the youth i mean the, and, and give them that, like that of the eagle he is renewing your strength again can you lift a shout to god and give god some praise in this room yeah 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 you will do that project you complete that business your business is, oh, is going to rise up again. They said you can't do it. Oh, watch me, watch me, watch me because I am breaking through. Lift a voice and praise God in this room. Praise God in this room.